What's up everybody? Today I'm teaching you how to design end posts for your wood shear walls with a great in-depth design example. You know we're going into the NDS, the supplement, the SPWDD, blah, blah, I always forget what it's called. Whether you're a design professional, an EIT, or a student studying wood in school, this is a great example for all of you. So sit back, relax, put the lights down in the auditorium, grab a little popcorn, say hi to Jose, subscribe if you haven't, and let's get started. I've provided a figure already of a shear wall that we're going to be using in our example today. And the big takeaways here is I've defined a little bit more closely the end post conditions. We have two two by four posts that are nailed together. Um, they're dug fur, they're select structural, and they're fully braced in their weak axis. So that is um, this way, this way. So like if I have, you know, boom, these two in a section, this is their um, weak axis right here. This is their strong axis. So, and, and that is uh, pretty typical because you have, you know, your sheathing, whether it's single-sided or double-sided, nailed to this sucker. And most of the time you have some type of intermediate blocking at half height, third points, whatever. So uh, those studs are really locked in from ever really being able to um, bend about their weak axis. But in this direction, I guess I'll go a different color. In the blue direction, in their strong axis, they are fully unbraced. Um, so we're gonna need to pay attention to that as we move forward here. Our forces have already been defined today. I know uh, I didn't do it in a previous video or anything, but I really want to stay focused on just the end post design today. So our tension and equivalent compressive force is just a hair under 3000 pounds right here. And we need to check today to make sure that our posts are uh, sized adequately. So this video, we're gonna be checking our posts for compression, and we're also gonna be checking for tension. And then there's a little twist in there where we're gonna need to be checking something else as well. So you're not gonna wanna click off of this, you're gonna wanna stay tuned. But let's start with tension. Let's call out T again, 2935 pounds. Our cross-sectional area of our hold down, like we drew above, and it's two two by fours. So that means this is one and a half, one and a half, that gets you three inches, and then a two by four, a true two by four is three and a half inches. We'll need our area, uh, G, gross, just three times three and a half, 10.5 inches squared. And we also need our net area. And what defines what our net area is? Well, the uh, NDS does a great job of that. So let's head over there right now. We find ourselves in section 3.8 very clearly. We are tension parallel to grain for this instant. And we have just this little baby paragraph and it tells us that we need to design based on the net section area. And it gives us another section to head to that defines that. So 3.1.2, they have a whole page dedicated to it and they define it better here if you're not familiar, but basically it's just, you get your net section by uh, deducting from the gross section area that we calculated, uh, the projected area of all material removed by boring, grooving, dapping, notching, or uh, other means. So there you go. And you can look further here for other weird kind of instances um, that they give with figures uh, and talk through a little bit more. And you may be saying, what do we have to like think about how many nails go into this thing or something like that? Well, not necessarily. I'd say that you can, you can bypass the nails, but something I did add here is for the connection of the hold down itself, uh, I'm stating that we have one quarter inch diameter screws that are connecting the hold down into the bottom of your post. So that's gonna be a little chunk of meat that's coming out of that uh, cross section. I'm gonna go green for the cross sectional area. What's happening is our little dashed green here, that's a quarter inch. So that turns this dimension into three and a quarter inch, which gets us 9.75 inches squared. Not a huge difference, but it does affect the calculations. Now we actually need our properties for the wood that we're using. So you know we're going to the supplement next for uh, Doug Fir Larch. So we want these values. And we don't need all of them, but I'm going to bring the ones that we need back with us. So see you back in the auditorium. All right, beautiful. And now finding your max tension stress is very straightforward. It's just your max force T divided by your net area. That's force over area that gets you a stress. So you know you're going the right way. 301 PSI, now that is your demand. And we're running ASD. Uh, I didn't clarify that at the beginning, but now you know. But now what about our capacity? FT prime is equal to FT times our uh, adjustment factors. But which ones do we use? 
In this case, we're gonna be using just CD and CF. And I know those because uh, they're specified in the NDS. I'll show you the table very quickly. Table 431, this is where all the magic happens. So whatever you're trying to design, they then tell you what adjustment factors you need to plop in for your design and account for. This is us for our first one, and we're not insized. The temperature is indoors, so it's unaffected, it's just 1.0. Moisture, same thing, it's indoors, so it's just 1.0, so that leaves us with CF and CD, like I said. CD, since this is, uh, the lateral force is due to, let's say, an earthquake, is 1.6, that's your duration factor. Um, if you're familiar with my channel, we've gone over, I think, plenty of wood now, where you know how to find, uh, or at least locate, um, the areas of the code of the NDS where it tells you where you can find uh, these adjustment factors. But if not, leave me a comment down below. I, I'll answer any questions as to, hey, where'd you get that and where'd you get that? But for simplicity's sake, I want to keep this video rolling and uh, I will be supplying you these adjustment factors. But I have plenty of other videos where we get all into the nitty gritty of them uh, so check them out. But don't uh, don't click off of this one just yet because YouTube's gonna get angry, you know? Not me, YouTube. YouTube. Oh, and uh, subscribe, you know, if you haven't. And then that just leaves CF. And actually, I'll show you where CF is because it's just right here. And uh, we have, so you might get drawn towards this value or this uh, equation right here because it's just, ooh, so tempting, so juicy. But you need to read this paragraph up above here. This equation is for um, dimensional lumber that is larger but we have two to four inch thick lumber, so you need to go to tables 4A and 4B. So you can head over there, check that out. But for me, I already know that CF is equal to 1.5. F prime T is equal to the following, which is significantly greater than your demand. DCR of 0.125. Way over capacity there, so we're good. But let's keep moving on with this example. Well, now our post is designed for tension, right? Wrong. We still have one more thing that we need to check in combination uh, with tensile forces for these posts, and that is bending. And you're like, what the <laughs> bending? Where the hell is that coming from? We zoom in on our two compression posts, and we got our sill here. Hopefully my big head's not in the way. I'll move it out of the way if it is. And then in green, you have your hold down. And then in blue, you have your hold down anchor. Oh my gosh. And then you got your concrete down below here. But what's happening here is you have a tension slash compressive force going through those end posts, but for the tension case, your hold down is eventually what is uh, counteracting that tensile uplift. So your resultant RT is in the hold down, which is aligned with the anchor. So that means that force needs to get from the center line of your post to the center line of your anchor bolt. Well, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, that to me smells like some eccentricity, which now that you've introduced eccentricity means that you have some type of bending in your post. That's why we're checking. Uh, don't despair too much. It's pretty straightforward. So let's walk it through together. For a hold down, um, typically there's, and you always wanna check your product that you're using for a hold down, but typically there's like a one and a half inch offset from the anchor bolt to the um, face of your post. Um, but then you also have to get to the centroid of your post, which means that to get to the center, that's one and a half inches. So one and a half plus one and a half, your eccentricity is three inches. So we're gonna roll with that. Moment is gonna be equal to T times E. That gets us 8,800 pound inches. The actual bending stress, F sub B, is gonna be equal to M over S. S is equal to B D squared over six which pumps out 5.25 inches cubed. And that again is derived from your two bys. In this case, it's gonna be B. In this case, it's gonna be D because it's bending about that axis. You get the following for FB. Almost 1700 PSI. Now let's determine our capacity. Well, F prime B is equal to FB times your adjustment factors. Today we'll need CL, CD, and CF. CD, we already know. CL is equal to 1.0 because the uh, breadth of the post is greater than the depth of the post based on the axis of bending that we're looking at. And you can find that in uh, in the NDS, in the CL section, uh, in the definitions early on. So there are calculations for CL, but at the very beginning of the section, it gives you ex um, exemptions where you're allotted to take 
a CL as 1.0 if you meet that criteria. That was one of those criteria that I just said. And then CF, you also, like I mentioned earlier, need to head to table uh, 4A, and that's actually in the supplement, so it can get confusing sometimes. I know I used to get confused. And uh, for a three by member, which is our two two by fours put together, gets you um, a factor of 1.5. So our bending capacity, F prime B, is equal to the following. 3,600 PSI, well less than our bending demand. But one more check that I want us to do is check uh, slenderness for our posts. First slenderness check that lands us in table 333. And uh, we have a single span beam in our condition here. And we're actually a little out of the ordinary going all the way to the end. We have equal end moments, which means we're going to use this case. And our LU in this case is the height of the shear wall, or the height of the post, which is eight feet. That gives us an LE of 14.72 feet. And then if we scroll down a little further here to the next page, we'll plug that in for RB, and then we need to make sure that RB does not exceed 50 for our slenderness ratio check for bending members. And there you have it. So we are okay. Um, that was just a quick little thing to check to make sure that you're within the you know, the limits uh, per the NDS. Well, now we need to combine forces here. So let's head back to the NDS to see what we actually need to um, uh, adhere to. That lands us right here. And we have these two cases that we need to solve for. And they give FB star, and they say reference bending design value multiplied by all applicable adjustment factors except CL. And then FB star star is the same thing except CV. FB star equals 1500 PSI times CD, which is 1.6 times CF, which is 1.5. So there's no change. That's still 3600 PSI. And let's plug everything in for check one and see what we get. A DCR of 0 0.59, which is still less than 1.0. So we are okay. FB star star is equal to the following. 1500 times 1.0 for CL times 1.6 for CD. 1.5 for CF still gets you 3,600 PSI for our condition, but that, that isn't always the case, right? Because CL can uh, very often for a lot of times when doing combined forces not be 1.0, so it's important to check. And then the NDS said uh, ignore CV for the FB star star case, which we didn't even have that in our condition anyway, so Still, there's no, you're seeing no real change here, but um, you do wanna be paying attention to those things for your different conditions. All right, that gets us, if we plug everything in, the following. 0 0.38 for a DCR, which is less than 1.0, and we are still good. So um, our uh, end post for tension, for bending, and for combined tension and bending all checks out. Now we just need to find compression. Well, our compressive stress is easy to find. It's just, very similar, C over A, except this time it's C over area gross. 280 PSI, keep that in your back pocket for later. Well, first thing we wanna do is to determine our effective length anytime we have compressive members. So LE is gonna be equal to K times L. L is gonna be about our strong axis, um, which is the unbraced, completely unbraced condition, which means that it's going to be eight Feet. K is going to be 1.0. That's because we are uh, classifying this as a pinned pinned condition. That just gets you LE still equal to eight feet. Um, if we recheck the slenderness ratio, that time it's gonna be LE over B, 27.4, which is less than 50, so we are still okay. Really fast, everything that we just did for slenderness check is in uh, section 3.7, which is solid columns, because now we're treating this like the whole time like a column, and it's in this first section here. So that's where you got your, your KEL. Here's where you have your parameters, slenderness not to exceed 50. So that's where I just got all that from. And then they have a great figure above to um, show you visually what, uh, what all the variables you were just using are. We now find ourselves back at this table because this is, I mean, this is the creme de la creme and we are doing compression. So we're gonna find ourselves here. We are not, compression perpendicular to grain. That's not what we're doing here. Compression perpendicular to the grain, getting on a tangent here, is like if you had a sill plate and then you had forces pushing down on that, that's when you have um, C perpendicular. 
But we have studs, force coming down, and all your grain is lengthwise down that stud, so that is parallel. Our factors, CD, CM, CT, CF, CI, CP, my goodness. Uh, incising, we're not doing that again, so uh, that's just 1.0. Again, we are on in, we are indoors. So we have a controlled climate, which means our temperature and our moisture are both 1.0. C sub D is still 1.6. CF, um, we're gonna need to take a look at that. And then we need to find the big boy, C sub P. And that I will walk through because it's, it's a couple of steps, it's a little bit of a process, but we're gonna get through it together. Hold my hand. CF will change and it actually, and it does change to 1.15. And our FC is equal to 1700 PSI and we determined that in the beginning from the supplement. So scroll back up or go back to, scroll back up. You can't scroll up. Go back to the beginning of the video if you need to see where I got those values from, but it's from the NDS supplement. That lands us back here, 3.7, and we're finding CP, column stability factor. This is a big deal because um, depending on how your column is braced, depends on what CP factor you get. And there's a wide range and you can really take a hit if you have a column that, you know, is just completely unbraced, which in this scenario is what we have. So don't underestimate this. I know early on in your career, you can kind of get in that groove of being like, oh, it's so easy for so many conditions to take 1.0 for a lot of factors but this is, the, this is the one the most that you absolutely cannot skimp on this. You need to pay attention, and although it's long, you need to go through it, and you need to understand it, because it can really, really lower the capacity of your member that you're designing. That leaves us with this honker equation, um, and then down below here, they do a good job. They give you all the variables that you need to that are contained in that equation. We have FC star, so, uh, reference compression design value parallel to grain multiply by all the applicable factors except C, uh, CP then you have FCE which given that an equation we need E min prime so we'll check that out quickly and then they have C sprinkled throughout the equation and those are just given right here you guys got eyeballs I know I'm kind of going way too far into it but uh, we have just sawn lumber so C is 0 0.8 for us and then if we scroll up do we have anything else Eh, not really. All right, beautiful. And see what's going on with what we need for E min prime. Because when you see the prime, it means that uh, adjustment factors are thrown in there. So do we need to find more factors for our factors, for our factors, for our wood? My goodness, everybody loves wood. 1-0, one 1-0, -oh, one -oh, one -oh. CT is for trusses, so it doesn't apply to us. So uh, e min prime in this condition is the same thing as just E min. FC star, pretty straightforward. 3128 PSI, C is 0 0.8 for sawn lumber, FCE is equal to the following. And here's where our LE comes into play as well, I forgot to mention that. Spit all that out, gets you an FCE equal to 755 PSI. And I just now realized I made a quick mistake, a little error. The values are not incorrect, but I accidentally put a B, this is supposed to be a D. Okay, but that gives us everything, so now we can confidently find C sub P and you plug all that jazz in, you get the following. 0 0.228, a massive hit to the capacity of your end post. That gives us the drum roll of FC prime equal to the following, 712 PSI. So we are good there with a DCR equal to 0 0.39. We are sitting pretty, we're looking good, I like it. And we have one more thing to check. If you look down on YouTube and you see that you haven't yet subscribed to Kestiva, um, do that right now, especially if you learn something new. It's always your call what you wanna do. But if you wanna connect, if you wanna learn more about structural engineering and connect with other engineers learning along with you from around the world, do yourself a favor and uh, click that button down below. I'll see everybody next time. This is Rich with Team Kestiva. Peace.